A test of man and machine, the Rolex 24 is one of the crown gems in motorsports. 2023 will see the 61st running of the race, featuring a jam-packed grid with a reserve list being used for the first time since 2014. I'll take you through everything you need to know about the Rolex 24 at Daytona. The Rolex 24 at Daytona is a 24-hour sports car race. It takes place in Daytona Beach at the infamous Daytona International Speedway. Now, when you think of Daytona, you, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is the oval that NASCAR races on. This race, though, doesn't take place on the oval. It takes place on the road course circuit of the track that does share the high-banked corners of the oval. Daytona International Speedway has quite a long history behind it, dating all the way back to 1903. Races at this time took place on what's known as the world's most famous beach and the birthplace of speed as it's sometimes referred to as hosted speed trials until 1935 when stock car racing began. In the years following, NASCAR as an organization would soon be founded and it was quickly realized that they needed a permanent facility to hold these races. On February 22nd, 1959, the Daytona International Speedway, aka the World Center of Racing, opened for the first Daytona 500. This would set the stage for what would become the most iconic stock car race in the world. The 3.56 mile or 5.73 kilometer a road course that will be raced on for the Rolex 24 was built in 1959 and hosted the first iteration of what would become the 24 hours of Daytona in 1962. This first race was called the three-hour-long Daytona Continental. It wasn't until 1966 when the race would become a full 24-hour race, and while there have been various changes to the format, to the track over the years, the track layout for the road course has maintained basically the same as it was when the track first opened. The unique layout features a very flat infield portion of the track, Combine that with the high banked corners of the super speedway and sew it all together with some tricky corners and a high speed chicane and you have what is the Daytona road course. This year we're going to see 60 cars take to the track which is just one fewer than we had on track last year and they will be spread across five classes with nine cars entered in the GTP category, 10 in the LMP2 category, 9 in LMP3, 8 in GTD Pro, and a very large 24 car grid in GTD. In 2022, there were 761 laps turned by the victorious Meyershank Racing Acura of Ollie Jarvis, Tom Bloomquist, Helio Castroneves, and Simon Pagano. They covered 43, a little over 4,300 kilometers or about 2,700 miles over the course of that 24 hour race. And in the other classes, in LMP2 was the number 81 Dragon Speed entry, the number 74 Riley Motorsports Machine in LMP3. A brilliant finish in GTD Pro saw the FAF Porsche beat out the KCMG Porsche on the final lap, on the final couple of corners of that 24 hour race. It was truly incredible. And finally in GTD, it was the number 16 Wright Motorsports Porsche. Now Daytona is a very quick track with lap times varying for the different classes from about the mid 130s for the GTP cars, ranging on down to about the one minute 47 seconds for the GTD cars. And with it being such a high speed track with some very heavy braking zones, there are some quite good passing opportunities around this track. Going into turn one, it's a bit of a tricky transition going from the NASCAR track onto the infield road course and requires quite a lot of driver skill under braking, but there is a good opportunity to make a pass there. The international horseshoes on the infield as well. And you just might see an opportune dive into the bus stop chicane. As it is a 24 hour race, it will be raced in daytime and nighttime conditions. And while the cars do feature headlights, the track also has floodlights as well. Now these floodlights are set to just operate at 20% of their maximum brightness, which ensures that drivers still have to rely on their headlights during the nighttime hours. Weather can also be a gigantic factor as well. Daytona International Speedway is located in Florida, which is definitely no stranger to some rainy conditions. Back in 2019, actually excessive rain 
caused red flags to be thrown throughout the final eight or so hours of the race, and the race was actually forced to end a little bit early. Really, when it's all said and done, the Rolex 24 is a true test of man and machine. And it's not just raced by one driver in the, in the car. Teams usually consist of about four drivers. They will rotate in about every one to three hours, depending on how long the team wants them in the car. And when their stint is complete, they swap in for the next driver on the pit stop. With it being a 24 hour race, oftentimes there are mechanical issues or a car might have a bit of a, a small crash or a large crash actually for that matter. Even if a car does run into some problems, it's still a 24 hour race and there's plenty of time for you to rebound from your problems. In fact, one of the great comebacks that comes to my, my mind anyway, was uh, at the end of the 2021 season, it was just a 10 hour race at Motul Petit Le Mans, um, but one of the Mazda DPIs had problems early on in the race that set them back. They were three laps down, I think in the first hour or two, and they battled their way back over the entire course of the race and they wound up winning the 10 hour race. You can only imagine in a race that's 24 hours long, you have more time to rebound and come back. And even if the team or the driver that you're rooting for has problems early on, there's still a very good chance that they could come back and get a good result. 2023 will also see the first race for the new LMDH cars that are going to be racing in the GTP category. Acura, BMW, Cadillac, and Porsche all have multiple cars entered in the class. However, there is a little bit of concern over the reliability of the brand new cars over the course of this 24 hour race. Despite teams working and testing on these cars for months, there have been some pretty severe supply chain issues that have hampered the testing efforts of the manufacturers and the teams. And this has ultimately led to the question of, are they reliable enough to be able to make it through the 24 hours? And could we possibly see one of those LMP2 cars, which have been staples on the grid for a number of years now, could we potentially see one of them grab the top spot on the overall podium. It's going to be very interesting to watch how teams are going to manage the reliability concerns and how they strategize around that. And all of this, of course, remains to be seen. We're not going to know until they actually hit the track for this race. But one thing that we do know is that there is a tremendous amount of excitement surrounding this year's race. In fact, there are a lot of things that you should know about the 2023 IMSA season, and you can find out all about those right here. Once again, a big shout out to all of our early Patreon supporters. If you too want to support the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash off in the S's. Once again, though, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend. It doesn't go off in the S's.